Welcome everybody to uh, Do You Even Star Made the Podcast, Episode 3. Today I'm joined by Brave Steel Dragon, Omega Cybron, and uh, the 11th, and Tosan. So, um, we're going to be moving through a couple of questions. So, um, I'm just going to announce through the first section. So, 42. What is the meaning of Star Made? Quick discussion on single player survival, build mode options, Maps and navigation improvement. Uh, turret speculation is the second point we're going to go through. Better power usage for turrets. Uh, what should turning speed be, if there was one? And should it be a server setting? Third point is universe generation. Uh, more generated structures like inactive war zones and so on. Uh, commands to spawn the NPC structures might be useful. Let's so talk about that. And then procedural asteroids. Maybe we can make them more varied as you go further out. Um, on the fourth point, we're going to be talking about work in progress. And uh, invite everyone here to just say a little bit about the last thing they built. And then finally, we're going to do what do you know about chairs? The discussion on design versus prefab. And of course, we're going to introduce the Mobius chair concept today. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go from the first one. What is the meaning of StarMade? So... If you want to say anything about that, Brave, we're going to go down the list in order. So you go first. Well, for me, Starmade is mainly a building game. So as long as there's no survival factors such as hunger, uh, actor danger such as atmosphere, NPCs, or else, it's mainly a building game where you shoot uh, pirate AIs. Besides mm. that, it's all the building competition towards other players. Nice. nice. It's very true. I agree with that 100%. Omega, do you have anything to say on the survival well, of single players? Well, to me, is the ultimate uh, building game for building spaceships so far. Of course, when you would compare it to something like Space Engineers, there's like a whole difference. So you shouldn't even compare those two. But to me, uh, the building and gameplay is... A lot more fun, in my personal opinion. Nice. But, like, what would you add to make the game better for a single-player experience in terms of survival? Anything? Uh, more AI activity. Like, um... Well, actually... More active raids, actually more uh, NPC stations, different kind of stations. Uh, mm, we're going to be getting onto that in a bit, so... All right. Um, uh, the eleventh. What have you got to say about any of those three things under the meaning of Star Made? I think the um, like maps and navigation. I think um, that if like from the map mode, if you could like um, find a sector, you could set a course for it. Like have like a navigational marker over there. Yeah. Yep, like you would yep, um, yep. if you had a ship. I see. So even if you were just in the map and you found a sector, you could like push a button and that would just set your nav for that sector. And then it would just, you know, when mm -hmm. you go back into flying, you know which way to go. Yes. Sounds reasonable. And also in map, it would show you what direction you're looking. Ah, uh, yeah. Like which... That'd be useful, I admit that. <laughs> uh, Tosan, have you got anything to say on this one? Well, I just think for the Star Maids, like, everybody has a builder inside of them. Yeah. And they just want to make, make something with their own hands that they can show everybody else. And even if you, like, want to, like, if you like PvP, you build your ship. So what you fight with is what you made completely. Mm. And, uh,. I really don't think there's going to be much focus on single player. Maybe I'm wrong, I haven't heard this game much, but I feel like it's going to be more of a multiplayer focus thing. Yeah. If it is really single player, it'd probably need AI for bigger ships. Like, for every turret, you need one NPC. And every AI ship, you need an NPC. Yeah. 
or we're speculating because we don't know yet but uh, of course that could be the way it goes we know that the Bobby AI might be get phased out um, but just the idea of starting on a planet versus starting in a station could give a bit more of a survival aspect to the game because you'd have to actually you know if you didn't have a core to start with you'd have to try and figure that out so but who knows what will be implemented so we're going to move on to the turret speculation section of the podcast so uh Obviously, we are talking about better power usage, turning speed, and server settings. So when I refer to per power usage at the moment, uh, sometimes they don't actually draw energy from the ship when it runs out. They'll just continue to fire. So, well, they do draw energy from the ship, but when the ship runs out, they still fire. So at the moment, it does mean that you it's hard to uh, consider what is powerful. But of course, people make the... Um, self-sustaining power on their turrets before fitting them so but what do you think about turrets brave well i'm not much of a turret user but those few times i used them i always uh, made them rather autonomous besides trust so they had shields guns power the fact that they drain power from the ship uh, would be good because uh, I've happened to make it to Reds on Planets without any power generators, they could have still fired without energy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to Reds the drain actor energy. Because sometimes you see enormous to Reds as big as the main ship, they draw more power than the ship's main weapons that they yet still fire about as good. Hmm. That's an interesting point. Uh, Omega, what have you got to say about turrets? Uh, well, power usage. I think there really has to be some uh, system that actually drains the ship's energy. Because now, I believe it's still that they will check if there's energy, but they won't actually use it. So, people can actually just put, a sh well, ton of turrets on their ships and have like crazy crazy of power shots so personally I think the power uh, system should be improved and for turning I think well slightly faster for smaller turrets and big turrets but because now they all seem to turn at the same speed yeah so do you think and the big turrets should turn slower yeah and actually, when you are talking about big turrets, they should also have uh, slightly less accurate uh, shots. Because bigger turrets will most likely fire uh, further away, so they should not be uh, able to hit small fighters from a very long distance. They are meant to kill uh, capital ships, not uh, small fighters. Right. So then, uh, the eleventh. Uh, anything to add on turrets? Um, I pretty much agree with with Ari been what's already been said. Right, fair enough. Uh, Tosan. Hold oh, on, my alarms went off. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, sorry about that. I just had an alarm go off, but um, turrets. Um, turrets. Turning speed, what's good, what's bad? Well, they should be, the, turret, the turning speed should be just like the ships, because the bigger the turret ends up being, then the slower it turns. And that's, that's really it, but... Right. The power usage, I really think that the fact that it doesn't use the actual power is, that, I think that's just a bug, I mean. Yeah. Of course, of course. Or you could like limit your turrets to only use a certain amount. Because one time when I was in a battle, we had a really big turret on our ship that drained the power completely and you could not use the thrusters at all. Until right. it stopped firing. Yes. That was not my ship because I don't, I don't design turrets that So you had to like build mode, remove the dock <laughs> or something. <laughs> Let it flop off. And... Yeah. Actually, I was in the turret, and I had to stop shooting for us to leave. <laughs> if I shot, nobody else could do anything at all. Wow. 
Okay, well, um, I think we're going to move on to the universe generation section. So uh, basically that's about having more generated structures in the game, like scrapyards and war zones, which are inactive, a command to spawn them, and procedural asteroids, which are more varied with scale out from the uh, centre of the universe. So, Brave, do you have anything to say on that? Not really, but uh, more generated structures uh, surely welcome. Besides abandoned stations, shops and pet stations, we have nearly have planets which are randomly generated. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, Omega? Uh, yeah, again, more structures would be nice. And maybe a easier option to use your own structures in your single player or on, or on the server right now the whole comfort uh, option is not uh, that easy mm. we, used, we used to have smed it but that's not really working anymore true true so yeah but it is open source so anybody with a bit of skill could take that over now and uh, update it yeah um, the owner's quite cooperative with uh, keeping that, but he's not actively maintaining it himself anymore. So, um, Right, so uh, what about the 11th? Did you have anything to add on? Um, I think, like, if, say, like, for around some planets with a city on top of it, um, for there to be, like, a minefield or something, or orbital defenses. Yeah. And, um... Same thing with like some of some stations and stuff, and maybe even like an asteroid field, because um, right now the asteroids are pretty um, spaced out more, yeah. and um, be a bit closer together to where like you could only really fly a small ship through. Yeah. And with the um, bigger asteroids, I I think like if one got like if there was a pretty large one for it to have gravity but not enough and not the same as a planet would yeah interesting so just more actual things for the generation to spawn other than shops planets asteroids yeah. stations and maybe even like a surface to the sun right right something else other than interesting well I know there's a lot of stuff planned so it's cool so then uh, Tosan anything to add on universe generation well this isn't really like a, this is something that could be fixed by any server but less shops less planets because there are too many too close and interesting so you're going the other well, way with it Sorry, what was I trying to say? Um, basically, for for like the sun, it's definitely way too small. You know, yep. as I already said, but if you make it too big, I can just know that the planets that are always like so close to it are just going to be engulfed by it. Right, I see what you're saying. In order to make it, it big, you'd have to stop the planets from being so close. Yeah, I but the beauty of them being close, I always always thought, was uh, that it brings everyone closer together. You know. um, that's, yeah, it's saying close, but they're just, I think they're like just a bit too much, too close. Yeah. And like, I was thinking of like, for nav for like navigating through from like one place to another, that's like 20 kilometers, instead of going straight there, you will like go on a predetermined route that is like guarded by MP AI turrets that'll keep pirates away from attacking you so it'll take longer to get there but you can be sure that you'll be safe yeah okay well uh, let's move on to the uh, fourth section which is going to be a regular feature on the podcast moving forward this is the work in progress corner so I'm going to invite everyone in line to just basically talk about for a minute on the last ship that they've been working on so I'd invite Brave to take it away well I just finished another ship and I'm starting work on another it's the Mark 12 on a long series of ships much take always the previous ship and modify it 
So it's pretty much the 12th time I modified the same ship over and over again. Cool. Perfecting that design. Exactly. Yeah. I fixed uh, some uh, lacking issues. Uh, maybe uh, in the previous version I had too little shields or too little thrust. I had thrust or had shields. Nice. I had if there were and any. I improved the overall preview design. Beautiful. Okay, so Omega, what about you? Omega? Uh, yes, I am still working on my capital ship. Yep. The exterior is <clears throat> so far, in my opinion, done. So I've been busy with the interior. I'm still looking for some rooms to add and where to put them. Yep. Big ship, but I also want this one to be beefy. Yeah. Lots of shields and tape makes it actually really hard to put shields in them. And what's the name of that one? Uh, the Venturer. The Venturer. Hmm, sounds interesting. I can't wait to see that one. Okay. Delighted. And the 11th, what's the last thing you were working on? I was working on my song class starship. Yep. yep. And it had a decent amount of shields, not the best. And it had a faulty power system that I'm still trying to work out. Yeah. And, but overall, she's a good ship. Cool. Um, and Tosan, you're next. Well, I'm working on a ship that I had based off of a picture, and I'm doing it again, but making it slightly different. Yeah. And uh, the main draw is going to be that since the first one did really well with the turrets doing all the work, they're not overpowered or anything. They're just just turret-based ship. And like the core has its own little section. As yep. you can see from the outside, but it's fairly well protected. Nice. It's kind of like a beetle on how it has its three sections. Ah, cool. Alright, well it'll be interesting to see how all of your ships progress. Um, and thanks for sharing. So we're going to move on to the final section now. Um, which basically, I mean, if you... <laughs> a reason I didn't talk about anything is because... Just because there's... Go... Videos... <laughs> um, but yeah, like I say, if you want to check that out, obviously it's mushroomfleet.co.uk and uh, there will be much content surrounding the podcast. We'll try and get links to those ships if you guys put photos up somewhere in the descriptions as well. So remember to send them in to me, okay? And uh, yep. mark them podcast three and then I'll know which one to chuck them into. So then, we're going to move on to the final section in today's podcast, which is an important one to me. So I'm going to let the other guys talk, but I'm just going to introduce it. So, this is What Do You Know About Chairs? It's a small feature which I've been planning to do. And um, basically, it's this creativity that players create their chairs out of the various pentas, wedges, tetras, corners, blocks. You name it, people have made all manner of different chairs in this game. And other games have actual chairs to sit in. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because they look pretty, you know, and you can make a room look really nice with those prefab chairs. And obviously they have the higher polygon count and all the rest of it. But the point is, my, my argument is that you wouldn't have that creativity because you just go, you know, why would you build a chair out of wedges if you could just slap one down out of the inventory? Um, and also, we're going to do a little bit of a discussion on Mobius chairs. The concept for the Mobius chair is a chair which is actually a ship of its own, a small entity, which uh, can dock in your bridge, and obviously using larger doors, larger corridors, it's easy to get around a nice sized ship, as you can sort of take it around. Um, there's a few people that have been developing these, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to see that, and what people do with it. But I'm going to start with Brave, so what do you know about chairs? I usually don't make chairs, but uh, I didn't experiment oh. much with chairs. I just put a wedge down and call it a chair. <laughs> nice. But I've seen other people's design, uh, and I might as well try my own. 
Nice. So it's inspiring, even though you don't have a design of your own yeah. yet. You see other people doing it, and you think... Why do they do it as well? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so Omega, what do you know about chairs? Well, I think you've seen a couple of my chairs so far. Mm. Mm. And the ship I was just talking about, um, I think if you remember some of my later ships, I have like a whole line running through my ship. What trying to do is make one ship a turret or just a duct, normal ship, so I can flood around in my chair, around the whole ship. Nice. I can't wait to do a little video on that. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the 11th, what do you know about chairs? Um, I haven't actually designed any chairs for my ships because th I don't really make a bridge yep. for it, like yep, a yep. command center. But I think um, the um, prefabricated chairs should come in a bit of a variety. Um, because if you just have one type, it would just, mm. um... And that's the problem, like, isn't it? Because then, yeah. then you've got a whole load of block IDs taken up, which could be used for more interesting things, when you can already make this stuff with, with blocks in the game. That's the argument, is a uh, headroom. Because in order to actually bring in chairs that there's a point, like you said, they'd need variation, which means you'd need loads of them because of all the orientations. And you'd end up with like more chairs than you have blocks of hull color. <laughs> and then it would be like, we could have done this all with stuff we already had. And if there's a limit to the total number of block IDs, that scares me, you know, because <laughs> I'd much rather that there were other functional blocks in place of a decorative thing like a chair. Although I'm not against the idea of that kind of thing. I've just seen it in other games and it doesn't really work. Um, eh. because you can't do your polygonal design, you have to match it in with their, uh, scale of design, which you can't match, because it's much finer than anything you could pull off with anything else. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Anyway, so, um, Tosun. Well, what you were just saying that made me, that made me think of that, um, if you make a prefab chair, you are gonna have to make a whole bunch of prefab everything else yeah yeah that just popped in my head but um and then it becomes like a 3d interior design program do you know what i mean yeah but um chairs because it's like clip art interiors like every interior you see would have the same fittings do you know what i mean like no matter what it was that you built Klingon, Federation, Star Wars, whatever, oh, same chairs. <laughs> Unless you want to have like a thousand block IDs used for chairs, sinks, m m you know, cupboards, <laughs> God knows. It's kind of like an Evil Lines interior. Yeah. Just, I'm not sure, but I think there's just four different ones, that's it, but um. There are, yeah, just four different pod interiors, and it's only a core room, <laughs> really. <laughs> When you think about it, it's just a call room. <laughs> Even in the station. I've really looked in a bunch of different ships, and I only only have three different chair designs of my own. And every time I see a new ship, I once saw like a bar within a ship, and it look, just looked really cool with with chairs that I usually wouldn't use. Mm. They were just like one just one whole wedge but they look like really useful in that yeah setting and yeah because i'm liking the good. grand chairs the mobius chair is a reference to metron who is a character from cartoons and comics um basically he rides around on this space and time chair you know it's crazy um and you know he's not evil or good i think he's sort of neutral but, um, yeah, the idea of being able to dock and obviously swivel your chairs on your bridge, that was the other thing that came about, because you put a, uh, a turret dock down and you can turn the chair, <laughs> face your crewman. So it's interesting. That's uh, the thing I really want, to swivel. Mm, swivel chairs, and you can do it already, and then you can undock it and fly it round. And 
<laughs> I mean more like a swivel block that can be used for any anything. Well, that's the thing, see, there's already planned is turrets. They may have one day a lockable axis option. So you could have the turret only able to turn on one axis. Or two. You know what I mean? For example. So that's that's I think might be a thing that's being thrown around. So But yeah, more options for turret dogs. So I think we might cover that in a later episode, actually. So, yeah, first of all, then, oh, lastly, I should be saying, I want to thank everybody here for joining in. Thank you to Brave Steel Dragon, Omega Cybran, the 11th, and Tosan. Hooray! Thank you. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be here. And um, I hope that some of you may join me again in a future episode. So um, that's pretty much the end of this one. So thanks to everyone that's catching this one live on uh on twitch tv of course this is going up onto soundcloud and you will be seeing a video um version as well on my channel all the links will be in the description so thanks again and we'll see you all next time